The Vivo X Note is a colossal powerhouse of a phone. With its 7-inch screen and $1,000 price tag here in China, this flagship beast is packed with a feast of awesome hardware and software goodness that will probably result in some of you in the comments asking where you can buy this phone. But at the moment, it's only available in China, with no international release date so far, but if you want to get your hands on this device, I'll put a link in the description, but expect the price to go up somewhat if it's being shipped from China. This phone does not come with Google Play services pre-installed, but I did manage to easily install the Google Play Store simply by downloading an APK file. This phone has some great features in both hardware and software that I can't wait to dive into. Just look at this spec list. The Vivo X Note seems to have everything, apart from a pen, which for a Note would have been an obvious and nice feature. Now the sheer size of this phone is not to be overlooked. This is essentially a mini tablet. If you purchase the Xnote, you don't really need any other mobile device in your setup. It has a large overall footprint, but oddly enough, it is way easier to hold than it should be. If you compare it to an iPhone 13 Pro Max or Samsung Galaxy Ultra, which are both smaller in size, the Vivo, with its thin, tapered sides, is extremely comfortable to hold. And part of that is also helped by the back panel being covered in a leather-like finish. Mine comes in this light blue color, which is a little bit dull and boring actually when you see it in person. I'd probably just go straight for the black if I had the choice again. Now getting a phone this big probably means you're going to be consuming a lot of content. 7 inches is big, but it's not all about size. You really have to think about quality too. And luckily, the display on the Exno is top grade, with Quad HD resolution, 120Hz LTPO and HDR10+. And all of that combined with the sheer size of the screen makes things like gaming or watching YouTube and Netflix feel so luxurious and comfortable, it's fantastic. It gets plenty bright when outside, and overall, I think it would be hard to go back to a smaller screen after viewing content in such luxury. The cameras on the Exno are housed in the same rectangular backplate as the iQ9 Pro, this time with a circular camera module containing four sensors, two of which, the wide and the 5x optical, come with OIS. I turned off the AI processing for as close to a natural look as possible, and the results from the wide sensor are as you would expect, top-notch quality, usually coming in brighter and more saturated than the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which has a more neutral look that crushes the blacks. If you decide to crop in using the Vivo, you'll be able to pick up that extra bit of detail compared to the iPhone that does have a lower resolution sensor. Although sometimes shots from the X Note do look a little lighter and softer compared to the iPhone's more clarity tuned processing, but I guess it depends on what kind of look you personally like. What I found with the rest of the camera system is that the ultra wide on the X Note does not match the iPhone in quality and reliability. If we look at the edges of each photo, in a lot of situations there is quite a bit of warping on the Vivo, and unfortunately there is also a noticeable gap in terms of clarity and detail. And if we switch to the telephoto lenses, the Vivo is able to punch in much closer than the iPhone that is stuck with only a 3x optical zoom. Now if we switch to nighttime, things get very interesting with both phones performing well using the main sensor. Both again carry over the same shooting characteristics from daytime, but if we look at some of the difficult shots, I think the Vivo just lacks that level of detail compared to the iPhone when focusing in on difficult subjects in tough lighting situations. And although the gap in quality is not that big between the two, there is a huge gap when it comes to the ultrawide, where the iPhone completely falls apart compared to the Xnote, which maintains a consistent stability and level of detail that can't be matched. There is really no competition here. The Xnote looks absolutely fantastic, and the iPhone, well, I wouldn't want to use any of these photos if I'm honest. 
But then if we go back to the telephoto sensors, the game changes again with the iPhone being in a league of its own, taking much cleaner, more precise images than the X Note, which much like the iPhone's ultra wide, really does fall apart in these conditions. Now we do have 8K 30fps video on the Vivo, but unfortunately it has not been implemented well, with focus, exposure and stabilization all failing to perform well, and honestly this video looks a bit of a mess. 4K 60fps is much better, the scene is lit far more gracefully, the saturation is eye-catching and overall the image looks sharp and well balanced. But the only drawback I would say is again the stabilization. It's a bit rocky compared to a lot of other high-end flagships and if we compare the footage to the iPhone 13 Pro Max, then it's pretty much night and day with the iPhone looking like I've used a gimbal. There is also night mode video on the Vivo, but if we put the two side by side, again I don't think the X Note does a good job, there doesn't actually seem to be any increase of quality using the night mode, which appears to only be able to shoot in 24fps and looks pretty choppy with boosted exposure, highlights and shadows. Now with cameras out the way, one of the best things about the Vivo X Note is the operating system Ocean OS. I've said it before, but along with Oppo's Color OS, these are the two most creative, fluid and interesting takes on Android out there at the moment. I think the real strength of Ocean OS is the UI design, which is modern, smooth and interactive. The way the user can manage the interface such as the design and layout of the lock screen, to the system look and settings that pops up in this interactive window, to the large clickable folders with different sized icons. Ocean OS is just such a pleasure to use and explore. The amount of detail put in, from the blurring of the wallpapers and even adding special effects and animations to your home screen is just another level of cool. Everything just works, the widgets look fantastic, the icons are fully customizable. I think people outside of China are going to get jealous if this gets any better, and I think it will. One cool feature this year is the privacy mode, which is secretly accessible from the right side of the dock, and to get access you need to go full Hollywood movie mode with a double fingerprint process, before being granted to this secure area. Here you can access all the documents, photos and apps that you don't want anyone else to see on the main part of your phone, which is great if you are a criminal or you're cheating on your partner. One thing the Vivo also gets right is the performance, with all of this year's top specs being thrown in under the hood and when it comes to more intensive tasks such as gaming, it's that performance combined with the display that makes everything feel special. That 7 inch Quad HD panel looks super sharp, the speakers sound fantastic and holding the phone is way more comfortable over a longer period than you would expect. PUBG on maxed out settings performed perfectly and the sheer size of the display made me feel like I was playing on a cinema screen that can fit in my pocket. Battery life has been okay, you do get a large 5000mAh battery, but on a phone of this size it would have been nice to see that being bumped up to 6000. That large high quality display does draw a lot of power and if you're a heavy user then you'll be reaching for a charger before the end of the day. Luckily you do get a fairly quick 80 watt quick charge that in my testing got the X Note from 0 to 100 in 33 minutes. There's also 50 watt wireless charging and 10 watt reverse wireless charging. The selfie camera on the X Note is a 16 megapixel f.25 wide that takes okay shots in good light with perhaps just a tad too much sharpening. This is what the selfie video looks like on the Vivo X Note. It's 1080p, I think on 30 frames a second, there doesn't seem to be any other option. And I have, for fun, turned on the beauty mode so my skin is nice and soft. Wait a moment. And now it is off. This is the normal picture with the uglier version of my face. Looking around the rest of the phone, we have IP68 dust and water resistance, dual stereo speakers on the top and bottom, a dual SIM card slot, and an alert slider that isn't exactly the easiest to access. It's a little tricky to toggle, but it's certainly nice to have. 
We also have a massive ultrasonic fingerprint scanner which I demoed earlier with the double zero locking security feature as well as 2D face unlock. Overall, I would say the Vivo X Note is a great option if you're looking for a phone of this size. It has an excellent display, a capable camera system, fantastic software and an elegant and classy design. However, because of its name and the fact there are hints of a business mindset within the software, it's a shame that it doesn't come with anything comparable to Samsung's S Pen to make it a true Note device. One thing I would stop and think about though is the performance in video mode, which I thought was not good enough in a lot of departments. But if you're someone that doesn't see video recording as a priority, then this is still a strong option, and I will always be trying to find the next fantastic phone to recommend. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, that would really help me out, and go ahead and smash that like button to help this video go further into the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.